All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com. Of course, on the 1010XL app, a great app to catch all the programming throughout the day on the radio side of things. And then you can get into the on-demand and other little tabs to catch this content and many, many others right from the 1010XL podcast studios. My show brought to you by Team Tommy Mack, a group of local businesses, regional businesses that do it right. They all have exclusivity. You you need some help. You need some service. You need some good food. You need places to go. Team Tommy Mac will help you with all of that. Of course, I'm wearing my man, Chris Lucero's bail bonds hat. Hey, if you get thrown in the clink, he gets you out in a blink. There's no doubt about that. Um, We have used him in the past. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but Helped a family friend in need. And man, I, I called Chris and boom, taken care of. And uh, he did it very swiftly. And I uh, can't thank him enough for that. He'll do the same for you. 904 822 2245, the number one name in the bail game, Chris Lucero's bail bonds. Before we get into it, because uh, you'll be surprised what I'm going to start with, I think. But let's say good morning to uh, Gramich. Gramich, how are you, buddy? Good morning, sir. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. You know, I was thinking on the way in, I'm like, you know, it, it Tuesdays. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather be, you know, eating breakfast, going to the gym, going to the beach, doing, you know, hanging out. <laughs> Tuesday's a work day, man. At least for me it is. So suck it up and get to work and do some good work. And we're going to do that right here on the show. But good to see you, my friend. You have a good weekend. How was the bachelor party? I did. Uh, I was about to, or I bachelor you... weekend, I should say. Oh yeah, the bachelor party great. was uh, it was great. Um, okay, I am uh, still a little tired. I bet um, I'll probably be dragging most of the week for being for being honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was really fun. We went down to Tampa. It was a buddy of mine that uh, went to I went to high school with in Nashville. Okay, um, private kind of party thing, or do you did you go to a few places? Or how, how, did, how no, do you we, we, how do you we bachelor it, it these days? Uh, we all got in Thursday night. Um, just hung out at the at the VRBO we got Thursday night. Nothing crazy. Pretty low key that night because because yep. some people were getting in super late and stuff. Still getting and, in. Uh, Friday we went out. Saturday went out. Played golf Saturday during the day. Oh, nice. Very um, cool. Did uh, went to the beach Friday during the day. Okay. Watch basketball the whole weekend as well. Oh, some great upsets. Just a bunch man. of dudes watching yeah. basketball, gambling on basketball. Beautiful. Then going to the bars and being drunk idiots well, the whole weekend. Let me tell you, I'm glad you had a good time and everyone stayed safe. That's most important. Uh, I, uh, last night, found myself watching the second half of Indiana and Oklahoma in the women's college basketball tournament. And let me tell you something. I was I was impressed the entire time. I was like, man, this is really intense. Uh, it'd been cool to be there because the atmosphere was was pretty awesome. They were at home at Indiana's home. In Bloomington, um, it was a tight game, you know, till towards the end. Very physical game. They had great shooting. They had great defense, rebounds. Some they, had, they had, there was a woman out there, six foot seven. She was gigantic, and and the girl Garter was like maybe five eleven, and she looked so tiny compared to her. And it was just man, it was awesome. Little guard shooting the lights out of the ball, um, but uh, Indiana ended up winning that game. Guess what? I, I'm looking forward to the Iowa LSU matchup. That's like pay per view almost. You know what I mean? Like that's that's going to be physical. That's going to be a physical. We know LSU is very physical. I don't, you know, and it's funny. If you see it live, you'd probably even have more appreciation how physical these women are getting after it. You know, they're banging each other underneath the boards. They're coming down the court and. I, I I kept watching it because they were getting really physical. The other center, a power forward, is coming down. First thing they do is a little think, you know, they're ch- hitting each other. It's pretty intense, man. I I thoroughly enjoyed that, uh, and uh, I'll probably watch more. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and watch a bunch of college women's basketball, but on a Monday night, you know, after dinner, and it was on, it was pretty awesome. It was really awesome, to be quite honest with you, so – uh, we'll see how that all shakes down. I will say that Caitlin Clark's dad gets dad of the year vote from, for, for, from me anyway, when he told his star, uh, daughter to shut up and play basketball. Basically <laughs> she was complaining. Did you see that? Uh-huh. She was complaining about the refs and you hear him like say, shut up, come on. Or something like that. He said, shut up, like play basketball. Like quit your whining. I don't care that you're the number one player in the country. I don't care what you think. Go out there and play basketball. Quit crying about the refs. Love it. 
We need more of that. We need more of that. Trust me. We definitely do that. Of course, owners meetings going on as we speak. A um, lot of people in an uproar about this hip drop tackle rule now. They'll call it 15 yards and an automatic first down. This is going to be really challenging. So diving on the back of someone's legs while you're chasing them down or their waist or what have you is not what they're talking about here. They're talking about when you grab around the waist and then pull back using your weight to stop them from forward momentum, okay? I know a lot of defenders and players out there are like, just, this is crazy, but what are you going to do, put flags on them? Look, I... I may be in the minority here. I, I don't like the hip drop tackle. I don't. It is very similar to the horse collar. Now, I know the side of it. Well, what do you, how do you want him to tackle, Tom? I get it. Well, maybe you're just going to have to tackle and not try to pull back and not try to, you know, with, with, refrain them from gaining more yards unless you, you hit them, you know, face up, face to face. I'm telling you, I was thinking about this, Grammage, on the way in. There's something about because look, first of all, the league wants scoring. They want they're going to protect the offense as much as they can. They don't want star offensive players getting hurt and being out of the game, especially quarterbacks. And they want scoring. They believe fans want scoring. And you know what, fans, you do, you do. Very few of you. Now I'm not saying uh, there's still a lot of you, but percentage wise of fans appreciate a defensive slugfest. You know. Whatever the score is, it's just not a high flying barn burn and back and forth kind of game. There's seventy five percent or whatever of fans want that, right? I mean, look at fantasy football; it's all about yards and scores and all that stuff. So you want that? I I, I get that kind of thing, but the league wants it too, so they're appeasing what they feel the fan base wants, and that they want more scoring. I'll be in the, what I was saying about in the minority, and I, I've said it during the year. The tackle I hate is the one where they go low when your guy's not looking and takes his knee out. I mean, that's the one I'd rather the hip. I I get it. I get it's like the horse collar. That's why they 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 you know got rid of the horse collar because you're going one way, you're being pulled back another, your feet are in the ground whether it's turf or grass, cleats or whatever and your feet are stuck and you get yanked back, you're probably going to pull something or rip something or tear something which happens. It's a very similar uh, type uh, m- movement. Um, but how are you supposed to tackle them? Well, okay. So Wilson, the linebacker from Cincy, that who did the tackle on Mark Andrews. So Andrews is here, you know, Andrews is over here. I hope we can do this right. And here comes Wilson, right? And he hits him and just kind of brings his body to the other side using his, you know, momentum to stop him. Not let him go forward. Well, he he rips his knee, and Andrews is out of the game and out out for you know the rest of 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 the season for that, for that matter. So how would you do that different? Well, I I guess you're just gonna have to tackle him, and wherever he lands, he lands. You know what I mean? I don't know. But pull him back once you you got your arms around him. I think something they should look at to make it fair, in my opinion, because we've talked about this forward motion. It only works in the offense's favor, right? Forward progress. Forward progress. Forward motion, forward progress. Yeah. You know, receiver catches a ball. I hit him, drive him back two yards. The ball is still spotted where he caught the ball. Yeah. I've always, I never really, I mean, I understand, never liked that that rule at all. I could see if you catch a ball, you get hit, and you don't go anywhere, and then you're fighting a little bit, you're fighting a little bit, and then they blow the whistle, yeah, you're staying right there, right? Because you you didn't get knocked back. But if you get knocked back, that's part of the – and that's what these defenders are doing. They're trying to not allow you to get those extra yards that you're, you're pretty much given every single time you have the ball in your hands if you fall forward. I think they got to look at something like that. I, I don't – you know, because what, what do you – what's next? What is next? I hope it's the take out the knee thing. I'm, you know what? Maybe you got to aim from the knee to the chest. Knee to the chest. That's all fair game. Easier but, said than done at that speed. Easier said than done at the, the timing of those hits. But I don't know. I just you can't the, hit them up high. I don't want them hitting them low. I don't. I think that's 
God, I well, and I'm biased because I tore my ACL. You know, it's a pain in the ass, and you're never back a hundred percent. You can get to ninety nine, but you're never back a hundred percent. The my issue, like. That's basically what they're telling players to do now is you kind of have like a knee to, knee to chest sort of Well, they area. haven't outlawed the low one yet. That one is. Right. And, and why, did they, why did they make this a rule? Because some pretty key important players got hurt with this yeah. type of tackle, right? Yep. yep. My problem with that is I don't disagree with you. There are certain tackles that, that should be outlawed, but yep. at the same time, like, you're playing a dangerous game when every time an important player gets hurt in a certain way, they look to outlaw that type of tackle. Right. Because I don't disagree with you that, that we can have kind of this target zone of a body to hit in a tackle, but what happens if next year, I don't know, I'm just making up a name, Joe Burrow or something, because you're trying to avoid all this other stuff, he breaks some ribs and can't play. Right. And then they look to have some... Right anti yeah tackle the ribs thing and it's just like wait you're till you like a, you know grab somebody whip them to the ground to get a concussion they're out for the right, year they'll, exactly they'll it's ban like ban that yeah at, when does it stop right at some point it just has to be acknowledged that football is a violent sport where you can get injured yeah and you and you play the game you sign up with the yeah. understanding of that no I, I i do i just i just hate lower body injuries i'll take a headshot all day long I, and most I would I'd take a head injury I would take uh I wouldn't want a neck injury or a spine injury never um but I would take a uh you know a, a head over a knee or an ankle or a foot again I'm a, a little biased but I think this big fat head can come back from a concussion trust me especially especially when you were playing a concussion is going to be a, a game or two max and I'm back out there no right right an, an ankle yeah or a, a knee month, man you weeks, shred that a knee. knee is the year yeah, you know, so so I get it for sure, and yep. I just, again, I just I think that the league is playing an extremely dangerous game. With it seems like now every year, when a star player, yeah, on an offensive star player gets injured because yeah. of a certain way that they get tackled, and on a national platform, right, like he did, the league wants to outlaw that way of tackle, yep. and it's just as you can't do that every single time. Like I got news for you, just I'm gonna go ahead and tell the future real quick. This future NFL football season, a star offensive player will get injured early in the season. They'll be out for the year. It yeah. will happen. Oh, it's going to happen. It yeah. just will happen. It happens, yeah. And for every year that football is played, that's going to happen. Right. So at some point, you're going to give, you're going to, you're going to run out of options on ways to tackle. Right. So the implementation of this rule is going to be very difficult. I agree. Because just go back to that tackle that Logan Wilson, I think his name is, right? I'm Mark Andrews. What if he doesn't, you know, throw his feet forward and, and drop? What if he just tackles him, but in midair he yanks him? You know what I mean? What if he's close to They're going to call the flag is my point. They're going to call the flag before they do anything else, until they get used to what they're looking at. Because they they're not going to really – I mean, some's going to be blatant. Some's not, right? It's with the horse collar. Like, what if I just grab it for a split second and then my hand's off? I don't even pull on it. I just happen to – I got to grab something. I'm gra Look, when you make a tackle, you're grabbing. You might grab the, the helmet. You might grab the shoulder pad, you might Whatever. You might grab anything on that, you know, within within reach. The, the unintended consequence of these rule changes every time they're implemented yeah. is the few examples that they show, bef what, like when the rule is implemented right now. Yeah. So the league has shown these, these examples from last season, right? Those are pretty clear and obvious examples. Yep. This coming season, just like you said, there's going to be a bunch of gray area times where it's really not a dirty play. Right. But they're going to call they're it. They're going to call it. And they're going to be forced to call it. And it's going to decide games at some yep. point, I'm sure. I'm yep. sure there's going to be a, a fourth and six. Yep. And a defender's going to make a tackle and stop a guy short of the line of scrimmage. And it won't really be what we're trying to outlaw with right. this rule but they're going to call it because it's close enough and that team's going to lose yeah. a game because of it. I do have to correct myself cuz they did on they they gave one for the defense. Last year they fined a guy like 40 G. I don't know the exact number of running back for lowering, lowering his head upon contact. Like lowered his head. I don't like that rule. I mean that I don't You want him to just run straight I don't, you know what I mean like 
like how do you not? That's playing running back. You you got to lower your your head goes with your shoulders. I mean, you got to lower your shoulders. Your head's gonna go down. I don't know. I I think they're you know I don't. I would if I'm if I'm a defensive coordinator. Look, Campo told me that he's like. When the rules started coming about how you could hit in the secondary, Darren Woodson, his star player, was like, I can't do it, Bubba. He's like, well, you got two choices. Either continue to get fined and maybe suspended or, you know, get with the program and and play the game. So you're going to have to figure this one out. I would just say just tackle. Just tackle. Tackle them any way you can. Just try to avoid flipping your hips to, you know, in the opposite direction, basically, or your legs to drop, drop them right there. Just, just make the tackle wherever that ball lands. Then that's, you know, that's what we give up. I guess I don't know. I don't like the name hip drop tackle because it imply. I, I, and you, you said it correctly and gave proper context because this is the truth. That it's that grab, pull the opposite direction and bring your weight down. That's what they're trying to outlaw. But when you call it a hip drop, no, no, it's not. It it's implies not pulling back. And falling back, it's grabbing, throwing your hips to the other side, and then yanking them back using your weight to, and then their feet get caught. It's like a hip swivel almost. Yeah, I get the hip drop because you're dropping your hips when you get them in a position to stop their momentum. Right. I just, I just don't like that name because in hip basically drop, you any don't tackle, stop. and basically any tackle the, you ever make, your hips are going to drop no, at right. some point because you're yeah. going to fall. So I just. And again, you're yeah. you're giving the proper context of what they're saying, but a casual fan isn't going to go do that proper no, research. No, no, right? Just be they like, probably think what you're drop, thinking. What? Oh, you can't grab and pull back anymore. Right. They, you, I don't know. And maybe that th- they will do something about that. It's crazy. Now the kickoff rule looks like that got passed, so it's going to be. And I don't know the exact ruling, but it's it's like the XFL, so you don't have as much of a running head start uh, upon contact. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I kick off. I love kickoff. I ran down on kickoff. Kickoff, you know. I was a wedge buster. They were. It was fun, you know. Um, some big hits. I had some big hits on kickoff. They were great. Fumble jarring hits. I actually won in the AFC Wild Card game. Like the second kickoff, I drilled the New England Patriot returning. He fumbled. Um, it was a huge hit. Like, I don't know. You know. Did the Jags recover? Did y'all recover? Um. I don't think we recover. No, did we? I can't. You know what? I can't remember. Maybe I got a concussion on that one. I can't remember. Who knows? But anyway, look, the rules are what they're going to be. The governing body's stronger than than most, and they're going to figure it out. Um, you know, I don't know what's next. What's next? I will. I will. The, the, they got to do a better job on defenseless player when they go low. I'm okay if you go low, like he's coming at you, and you go low, you take him out. I'm talking about where he's not looking and before he can turn and see you and maybe jump over you or do something, you're whacking him and his foot's like in a, the ground and forget about it. It's like over. a receiver running like a hitch. So he's turned around and you come while he's standing up catching the ball. You come here down low. Yeah. Or, or say you're the safety, right? You're behind me this way. I'm going here and you're drilling me in yeah. the knee and I can't even see you. Like I, I'm defenseless in that regard. Yeah. I don't know. And I always thought you you actually came up with it. The whole uh, um, um, instead of, uh, you know, because the hits to the head, inadvertent. We're like, there should be some in, inadvertency That's, to different rulings. Like, you didn't mean to do it. Right. I know it happened, but you didn't mean. You weren't aiming for his face. You weren't aiming to go hem, helmet to helmet. It just happened that, that way. Like a hand to the face. I'm not meaning. Well, sometimes they might be meaning to. Uh, like the girl in the basketball. She whacked Caitlin Car- Clark. <laughs> Did you see that punch? No. Holy cow. She like punched her right in the face. Anyway, you know, sometimes you're trying to block it. Sometimes, you know, you're trying to just get a, your paw in the way. And uh, sometimes they, it comes down. It's automatic 15. But should it be? Maybe a little inadvertent Why does, helmet, you know, hand to the face. It's just so it's so frustrating to me that every single rule implementation like this they have has to be 15 yards automatic first down. No, right. Like it's just why? Yeah. Wait, why can't why can't some of these some of these plays that are clearly not really egregious plays? I'm trying to hurt someone, like we just said they're inadvertent. Right. Why can't that be five yards? We keep it moving. It's well, like inadvertent in should be five. Right. You're right. 
Right. It's like in college with targeting. Yeah. Right. Wait, something that's just that's technically targeting, but clearly not the spirit of why that ever became a rule in the first place, should not disqualify a player. Right. It makes no sense. Why why does basketball have this right? Why can basketball do a flagrant one and a flagrant two? Right. With pen and and you get a flagrant one, I think it's one free throw in the ball, and that guy can stay in the game, and it's it's like strike one basically. Right. Like a yellow then, card. Right. And then yeah. the flagrant two is is yep. you're out of here and it's two free throws yeah. in the ball, whatever. Why why can't the league do the league had they had that with face masks for forever. No, right. They had incidental face masks right. and a real face mask. Yeah, it's kind of kind of what we're talking about. Ruff it, roughing the kicker, running right. into the kicker. Like right. why why can't should I be across the board. It's just it, but it's not it maybe they're worried about human error cuz it'll be subjective, right? Yeah, for sure. And I but I just think it, we we said this so many times before. When we watch games, it's hard to put into words yeah what a rule is and it's hard to like make a truthful like perfect definition of of something that's that they're outlawing yep but all of us watching know a dirty hit when we see a dirty hit yeah and all of us know when a guy is just trying to play football and make a tackle yeah or trying to hurt someone right it's it's typically pretty clear yeah i agree with that especially like you're saying with targeting you lower if you spear remember the old spearing yes you used to spear I mean, Doug Plank, the safety for the Bears, that was he was known for like he was flying in there with his head down, you know, whack you. You could that's uh, you know, I'm I'm that's where you get hurt when you it's lower dangerous that for head. him too. You're that's that's, a, that's how you break your back. No doubt. Absolutely. I don't know. You always got to keep that face up in my book. All right, catching up with Tommy Mack, brought to you by Team Tommy Mack as we get into some Jaguar talk, because I do want to get into that. Uh, Chris Lucero's bail bonds already mentioned. j Dog junk removal and hauling contractors. Check them out. They're looking for, uh, they've got a ton of uh, uh, tins for you to fill up. They'll take care of all your construction debris. JDogJunkRemoval.com. Graffiti, Burger Bar, and Jack's Beach. New ownership, new management, new menu. It's fantastic in there. A plethora of TVs for all your sporting events. Check out the basketball in there over the weekend for sure. Michael Nickus is State Farm Agency. He's been my agent for over 20 years now. Michael does auto life home and supplemental health he's he's one of the best out there no question about that code ninjas put your kids into camp this summer coding is cool they learn how to create their own video games i mean literally they'll walk away with owning a video game that they created check them out on uh code ninjas.com four great locations salt air inn and suites great place to stay boutique hotel four blocks from the beach with concierge service carpet man flooring more than just an ovp yeah all types of flooring highest quality at low prices azar sausage simply homegrown down home grown here processed here and in your local grocery stores including win dixie solomon ventures all home Home goods, indoor, outdoor, and everything in between at less than wholesale prices right there on Art Museum Drive and Atlantic Boulevard. And, of course, Adaptive Jacks, my branding and marketing partner right there in Jacksonville Beach. Soup to Nuts, they take care of your brand and uh, make sure that it is in great standing. All right, so Doug Peterson being interviewed down at the owners' meetings. A uh, good group of uh, folk went down there to uh, get some sound, get uh, a chance to talk to Doug, address some things. Um, you know, it's I, the one thing that stood out, a few did, but one that really stood out is when he said he doesn't think, and I'm paraphrasing, he'll ever get over the collapse of last year. Um, they asked about the Tennessee game and he's like, you know what? I actually, I'm going to have a tough time getting over the collapse, you know, the last six games where we let it really, you know, slip out of our hands and, and, uh, keep us out of the playoffs. Um, I, I could see that. I mean, I would, I would too. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. I'm not one of those. I know a lot of people out there, Graham, they like to say, I was right. I was right. I was right. Look at me. I made that pick, you know, three years ago. Look at me. I did this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not that guy. But there was something going on early in the season. We were talking about it. How do you have a bad week of practice in week two? When the Kansas City Chiefs are coming to town and you just had a win, not an impressive win, a good win. You won 31 to 20 up in India, division win, a great win, but you didn't play your best football. And now you got the champs coming to town and you don't have a good week of practice. Then the following week, Houston comes in and totally kicks your ass. 
so embarrassing in front of the hometown crowd. And then we hear we're believing our press clippings. I mean, this is week three, Graham. Week three, we've been looking at this going, Some, something ain't right. Like, it's kind of early in the year to say we got to get away from all the press clippings and go to London for a couple weeks. By the way, they came back great. Then they went on a run. Then guess what? They believed in the clippings, I guess, once again, and weren't putting in the work that it takes to maintain the top team in the AFC at that time. We kind of saw it coming. You don't want to believe it, I guess. Everyone thought I was crazy. No, no, no. Listen, psyche of a football team is is so important. It's so important. And, And you know what? One great thing about it all really is that Doug can use that for this year. Just flat out calling it out. He he even admitted to it himself, right? Got a little bit in the clouds, right? We're eight and three. Number one, eight. We're the, we're the darling. We are the darling. Look, look, look what we did a year ago. Look what we did. And then look at us now at eight and three, right? It happens. Hey, Philly, it happened to Philly too. They say the same stuff. How do you keep it together? How do you make sure you stay humble and hungry? That should be the tagline humble and hungry. Stay humble, stay hungry throughout the entire year until it's over. Maybe you're a Super Bowl champion, maybe you're not. Just stay humble and hungry the entire time. That should be the message because they weren't humble last year. And I think it goes across the board and maybe even with the head coach, maybe with the quarterback, maybe with other players, maybe not putting in enough time, extra time. I don't know, not in the locker room, but something went down inside the psyche of that team where they started believing that they were the shizzle, you know, that they had arrived. And then they were getting punched in the face. It was just, you know, that's why, like, when I say this 9-8 and eight stuff, don't even give it to me. It was terrible. I don't care that you were 9-8. and eight. Great. You know what? You can sit there. And 20 years from now, people are like, well, they went back-to-back winning seasons, 9-8, and 9-8. And, and somebody that wasn't there that witnessed it, it will not even know to say, well, that second 9-8 and eight was really embarrassing, to be honest with you. They had it, the, the AFC in the palm of their hands, and then they didn't show up. Then they sporadically made plays here and there and then didn't really give a crap. They had it all on the line the last game of the year. Think about this. All on the line to go to the playoffs even after dropping all those games and not playing very good football and you don't show up to your rival. That's the story. That's why it was a terrible year in my book. And you can say, you know what? Trap doors are right there. Nine wins. Great. Take it. Take the shoot out to La La Land and maybe it, it works for you. But the truth is it was not a good year the way they finished. But with that being said, right, what's that old saying, ashes to fire or something like that? You know what I'm talking about? It gets burned down, you build it back up. That'll be at least that's good. I think it's a good thing. Maybe Doug can use that and be like, hey, look, I'm at fault too. I overlooked. I, I, didn't, I didn't stay hungry enough. We all didn't. Got to stay hungry the entire year and have a chance to win a championship because that's what it takes. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me, Kansas City, tell me they're not hungry as heck. They may not be humble. Kelsey ain't humble, but who cares? They win, and they're, they, they, they care about winning, and they get after it every single game for the most part. You don't have to be humble if you show up every week. I ball. love swag, Cram. You know I do. Just the, back it up. You have to be humble if you're not consistently showing up. Travis Kelsey doesn't have to be humble because yeah. in the playoffs, when it matters most, Nobody can guard him. Yeah, well, his coach humbles him a bit, which I like. Yeah, for sure. Bang on the sideline. But again, but I'm with you. If because because we, we how many times have we seen this? This happened with the 2017 and the 2018 yep. Jags. 2008. In 2017, that team was really good and they were winning. So what did we say? This team's got swag. In 2018, they weren't winning. So what did we say? Mm. This team needs to be humble. You know, if the you're defense winning, had swag, though. The 2018 defense was pretty darn good. The offense, they couldn't do anything. But they did. Look, they look that one 2017 more than any other year. They all cared about, or at least not all, a contingent of guys only cared about themselves. They cared about their click. They cared about themselves personally, individually. They didn't put the team before all that. They put themselves before all that, and all those guys are no longer here. Yeah. 
I'm not saying they didn't want to win and they didn't want to compete. They didn't want to fight, but they cared more about themselves than fighting for the entire team and caring about the entire team. And then they imploded. You know, one thing that worries me about this team is I don't disagree with you that Doug can and should use use that collapse for for this coming up season to keep them humble and keep them motivated. If he's real with them. Yes. My issue is I don't know if he's going to be real with them because I don't know if he's been real with himself. He's spoken to the media, I think, three times since the season's been over. Yep. And he has really, really used the injury excuse a lot. Mm -hmm. That worries me. Yep. Because he's not wrong. They got hurt. But listen, man. So what? Again, it's like we were talking when we were talking about the rule changes earlier in the podcast. I yep. I got a prediction for you. Yep. Somebody that contributes for you is going to get hurt. Yep. And you just got to figure it out, man. That's right. It happens to every team, pretty much. And it, I that got that got a little tiresome this offseason. I kind of felt like Doug yep. was. And I'm not saying 100. percent I'm not saying he he's not taking accountability. I'm I'm yep. not I'm not trying to say that. It just feels like there's a little bit of a sense of. Well, once we get these guys back healthy and we're fine. No, you're not. You're not fine. No. Well, okay, look. So look at Caldwell's comments last year, right? It wasn't them. It was us. Remember, remember when, when San Fran mauled them? So embarrassing. And he came out in public and said, what would you tell the guys? Well, I told them that wasn't us. That was a bunch of imposters. Well, what do you think players react if their they're leader's telling them that? Yeah, it wasn't me. Yeah, what me? It's like the the new my bad. No, it was my bad. No, we already know it was your bad. We're watching the play. We know you screwed up. And trust me, I was plenty on the my bad side myself. But we already knew when you screwed up. You know that that you're, you that so that's the defensive coordinator. He's allowed to say that, right? Is Doug say yeah? You can say that if you feel that, because that's a terrible message. We're all creatures of habit. We're going to sit there and be like, well, if he says that, then I feel the same. Yeah, so what? Missed the tag? Wow, that wasn't me. Eh, get him next time. It's kind of a natural, like, ex excuse. It's a, it's a way to excuse away accountability. Yeah, it is. It is. That's what that's what my bad does for yeah. you for a split second of time. You know, you get to you know, sl sl slide off the accountability train tracks just for a minute. And then you're, built, you're brought back in. The coach is yelling at you. You know, or watch it on film and seeing it. So, look, I, they say Ryan Nielsen's different, that he is total opposite of that, that he's going to hold everybody accountable. Good. I'm surprised. You know, look, I don't – the stuff in public that they say, I, I don't – they got to say what they got to say. You know what I mean? Like like the Fort. Yeah, no, we're still happy with Fort. And, well, you're not because you, you grab Morris. Don't, well, don't, don't give me development. He's been starting for two years. There's no development. He's either going to be a, an animal for you or he's not. You don't think he is because you brought in Morse. I agree with you, but don't tell me you're developing him. That's a bunch of coach speak baloney. But well, he does address the media. What, I don't know what he's supposed to say. I, I don't know what I would say. I know this. They don't throw their players under the bus. No. They no, never they have and they never will. And I'm okay with that as long as inside they're on them, yeah. which I don't know if that's the case. Or it was didn't seem to be the case last year um we've talked about this before though how how many press conferences have we seen with all this coach speak where you kind of learn you kind of learn how to decipher it and you kind of learn what the coach speak actually means yeah like uh like i think it was yesterday when when doug was talking and he said you know bringing in mitch not a knock on luke you know we just want to develop him and when they say competition is good at every position, yeah. When they say that, but but they were asked about a certain position, that yeah. means they don't think that guy's playing up to par. Yeah. If 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 I ask, because because if they ask you about Trevor Lawrence, yeah. and Mac Jones, they're not gonna say the c word. I promise you, they're not gonna no, say right. competition. No, no, because no, no, that no. opens up a can of worms. Right. That you might be saying Mac Jones could compete for the starting yeah. job, and it's or, good. people or are going to have a meltdown. Maybe Trevor's not the guy. That's right. what it says. You're questioning right. that. If 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 they're asked about the quarterback position, Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones, I guarantee you they won't say the word competition. Yeah. Yep. But asked about center because they know Luke Fortner is not going to be their starter, and they know that he has not played well enough the last two years. They're like, oh well, it's just it's just the competition's yeah, good right. everywhere. Right. That's what it means. Right. No, everything means – and then look, like when they say Anton can play left, I think they, they believe that. 
And I st- still think I that's a, a potential thing to happen. We're going to have to see how that uh, shakes down. Uh, he does say Savage. Doug did say uh, Darnell Savage will be the nickel. Uh, they say he can play all the spots, so great. That's great. You know, look, I I, I think Cisco's a, a, a very good safety with the opportunity to be great. Um, having Eric Armstead's huge. That's going to help the secondary out so much. So I got a question. So much. Yeah, hit me. Um, anyway, I was going to finish. Uh, sorry, Antonio I Johnson, say, yeah. I, he's got a lot of upside. We saw, I mean, I, when he first stepped out on the film, like, okay, this kid, tall, athletic, fast, long, looks like he's got an attitude, likes to hit. Um, you know, and then, of course, Savage. So that's a good trio. That's a good trio. Savage can play safety. They say he can play nickel. So hopefully that's the case. So I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, you're good. Where does, if if Savage is my nickel, let's say, because I still feel like, and even even if it's not in the first round, they're taking a corner early, right? I th- they got to take in the first like three rounds. I would I would imagine so. Okay, yeah. so you imagine that guy's going to be a starter. Better be right. Well, right. So last year's second round pick wasn't a starter. Yeah, or the true. third round pick. That's true. So here's my question: Let's assume that that guy does become a starter. Yeah. Where does Ronald Darby fit into the mix? If if Savage is my nickel, he's corner outside corner. But but aren't and then Tyson aren't, aren't Tyson and my rookie outside corners? Depends how high you take him, I guess. So uh, if you take him in the first, now now you're not wrong. They've they've taken some guys that don't play. Yep. But if you take a corner in the first like three rounds, you got to imagine he's your outside starter, right? Opposite yeah, Tyson. I just don't think they went and grabbed Darby just for depth. That's what I'm saying. So I'm just confused that. where oh. I kind of feel like the way things are shaping up. And with the assumption that they're going to take a corner, someone will end up being the odd man out. Well, th- with the rookie involved, yeah. But the rookie, you can, you know, you can get, you can put him in there in different packages, right? Uh, maybe he's a good blitzer, you know. Maybe he's really, he's going to be really good in press. Now, if you grab somebody in the seventeenth pick, I would say they're starting, right? So you know, I look. You got to still. I, I believe they like Tyson. Tyson didn't have a good year last year. The, the 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 hamstring injury definitely affected him, but he didn't have a great year last year. He had a good year the year before. We thought he was on the rise. Agreed. Darius Williams had a better year, and they let him go. But I, I get because you you believe that Tyson has the tools to be elite. You do, and I do think that that injury helped. You know, affected his gait, his you know explosion and velocity and all that, but. Um, I'm not saying I'm down on him either, but maybe they, you know, that look, you got an insurance policy. If I draft a corner at 17, I got Darby and I got Campbell until he's ready. Yeah. And if he's that good, then we'll figure it out. And that's a great position to be in. I right? just, I get the, the need versus best player available thing. And I think we've talked about this on this pod before. Yeah. It just like, <sighs> What's the biggest thing? Well, hey, let me ask you this, because we talked about this before, and I mean, this may help you. Um, so we're at 17. This is a hypothetical we're drafting right now. Number 17, Jags got the pick. The top-rated, remaining top-rated wide receiver, remaining top-rated corner, um, and remaining top-rated offensive tackle. What are you taking? What position are you taking out of those three? I don't think there's any others that they would consider. Right, they got their interior figured out on offense for now. I'm not saying down the road on 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 in the draft, second, third, whatever. Same on defense, but if those three positions are sitting there, top rated, they're all rated the same. What are you going with? Corner. You going corner? I'm a. I don't think I'd go corner. I think I would. I I would address corner at some time. I would address wide receiver. But if there's a tackle there, like that that kid from Washington's there, he may not be there. Fautano, Fautano, I think yeah. he could play every position. That that is incredible. I mean, that means he is a elite athlete at, for a big man. They say his tenacity is through the roof. I would trade or cut Cam, and I hate to see Cam go because Cam's been a great Jaguar. I don't say that lightly. Please don't take it that way. And I would move Anton to left, and this new kid would be my starting 
right tackle. And then I'd go from there. Um, I'm not mad at that. Got to put your best foot forward for Trevor, right? Uh, even Doug said it. We need a running game for Trevor. They're expecting big things out of Tank Bigsby. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not ruling anything out. Year two should be a different year for all rookies. They should all feel like they got something to prove and they should have some confidence because they saw some time. Uh, I, I remember it. You know, look, I, did, I started four games my first year due to injury. Uh, played in 14. I didn't play in the first two. But I came in in 96 feeling pretty darn good. It's like, I know how to play. I could, I could play. I could hang with these guys. I might have to do more on special teams to, to win the job, you know, win a spot on the team again. But you get, you know, you adapt. They're, they're not, it's not so overwhelming anymore. You're like, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. I know they're big. I know I see them in the weight room moving tremendous amounts of weight. <laughs> Alignment, especially. You'd be like, oh my gosh, they're enormous. But you can hang. You can get hang. It's all adaptive, uh, being able to adapt, and and most guys can do that. So I anyway, my opinion, I would, I'd probably do that. Look, it's, you know, Trevor, Trevor, they're gonna beef up the line. They already have a little bit. Um, they they they're gonna give Tank his shot. You know, hopefully they're right. I do hope that they're right. He's got some skill, no doubt about it. Um, and they're gonna do everything they can to make sure that Trevor's successful. And that's the that's how their offense will run through Trevor, and he, they it should it should, um, and hopefully all these things pressure with the you know taking the run game off giving Etn uh, a little you know little breather here and there, you know let Tank fill in, uh, take some carries away but pound the rock, you know keep the pressure off the QB where he doesn't feel like he's got to, you know stand there and deliver and all everything's got to be on him every week, so. I'd go offensive tackle. I would. And then you got, so what do we got, a second and a third rounder? The third round is a comp, so it's like the right. very end of the third because you gave away your Ridley third. That's to right. The Falcons. So second round. Ooh. I might have, I don't Corner or wide, I would imagine, if you went offensive lineman there. Yeah, would you it know? have to be. Or Almost flip it sure. around. You go wide out or corner. I would think you're going to address the offensive line. I think so too. You know, I don't, I don't know. You I don't just, think you're you, going to run it back just with Cam and Anton. I think they're especially Cam at that number. No, right. If Cam's not willing to restructure, he can't be on the team, in my opinion. Yeah. You, 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 you can't. You can't justify. Well, then you, then you six, got. If you don't have Cam, you got to take a tackle, right? That's why they took a tackle yeah, last 100%. year, right? That's why they took Anton. 100%. And what a great pick it was. And Anton's they, a great pick. Why they take Anton last year because of Cam? Yeah. I mean, you, I you just, just feel like, you know, it, 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 I said this before last week. I just feel like it's time. It's time. It's time to move on. You know, it's time for the young lion to take over. Anton's the young kid who's got tremendous athletic ability, got a year under his belt, went against some top notch defenders and, and held his own, all with an injury. So you know he's tough, all physically, mentally, emotionally. He's got the feet. He drafted him in the first round. Trevor's your star player, you know, give him the best you can. You did it center, you upgraded center because you, you had to. You feel good with Ezra, fine, and and and, and Cher, fine. That's fine. Still got to address some, some depth on that in case something happens. But I think it's time for the young line to take over, man. And, and let Cam fit. He, look, someone's going to pick him up. You know, someone will pay him too. They'll probably take his contract to trade. You know, if they need a tackle, he can play tackle. You know, I know we talked last week, like, well, what if he took a pay cut and you played him at right tackle? Well, I don't know. He's always played left. So, in that regard, I'd probably... I'm not sure he's going to take a pay cut. What's that? I'm not sure he's going to take a pay cut. No, I agree. I agree. And I agree with you. He's got to do something with the number. It's just too much. $16 million of savings if you cut him. Yeah. No, I know. Or, you, you know, you do something where he, you know... Reduces I, that number somehow. If I can't restructure and get that number down, he can't be on the team, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. It's my opinion. Again, and I'm almost to the point with money or no money involved. Like, let's let the young young buck take over. That's what he's there for. You know, and they say he's got all the tools. So uh, we will see how it all – I think they got more work to do. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see when the draft comes. Now that we get into April next week – uh, should be a a good one 
um, to look forward to. Hey, did you see Xavier Howard's available, the Miami corner? I did not. Yeah, he's available. They're not. He's a cap casualty. He's an interesting player. Corner. You'd get rid of Tyson, though, if you did that. I would think so, yeah. I don't think they're ready to give up on Tyson yet. I, 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 and I'm not either. I, I hope he comes back strong. You know, he can play press. Remember year one, it was he's right there. He's not turning his head around. Yep. Year two, he's turning his head around. Year three, he wasn't very good. Maybe he's off. Um, so I, I do think with the addition of Eric Armstead, uh, more pass rush with Gibson, the 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 uh the growth of Trayvon, I think he's gonna continue and then and then Josh will give it his all as well and I think we'll be pretty formidable defense so overall. It'll be interesting. They say 4-3. By the way, I do want to, before I wrap up, I do want to, at least in my opinion, correct some. When a coach says four-man front, that's different than 4-3, okay? 4-3, there's a shade on the center, which is a nose tackle. Four-man fronts, you can leave that center wide open. So there's a difference. Uh, And it's harder to defend the run when nobody's on the center, for the record. And there's six guys in the box. Very hard for those linebackers to make those plays. That's why 4-3, you shade the nose and you bring the other guy down and you, it's harder for those linemen to get to your backers. 4-3 defenses are made for who? The safety, strong safety that comes down, and the two inside backers to make most of the tackles. That's how it's designed. I'm not talking sacks. I'm not talking hits on the QB. I'm not talking all that stuff. I'm talking stopping the run and tackling. Those are the three that the 4 threes typically set up for. All right? You with me? Yes, sir. All right. Time to go, man. Happy Tuesday to you. Uh, I'm going to be down at the uh, Florida-Florida State game tonight, the baseball game. Looking forward to that. And uh, going to be with some friends, talk a little biz. And uh, should be a good time. If I see you down there, please say hello. And uh, if I don't, I will see you on Friday right here in these studios after or before. Don't know yet. Um, me and Graham figured out the morning of uh, before my appearance on Jaguars today. With Mike Dempsey, Fat Tony, and Pockets. And, uh, of course, the horse's mouth on Thursday. Check us out Sunday at 12 noon on ABC Channel 25. Until next time, stay safe out there and be cool. And we'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.